in this video we are going to discuss shakespeare sonnet number 154 now uh, this belongs to the last final category of sonnets those are dedicated to the cupid or the god of love and uh, among the proper categorization i told you that shakespearean sonnets are divided into two categories one dedicated to the fair youth and the other category dedicated to the dark lady now these last few sonnets fall in the dark lady category but uh, they are originally dedicated to the god of love that is cupid so let's uh, read what shakespeare has to say in this sonnet number 154 the little love god lying once asleep laid by his side his heart in flaming brand so once he is telling a story a beautiful story he says once cupid the uh, you must have seen the images of cupid he is always presented as a little baby naked and he has his eyes tightly closed by a piece of cloth and he always moves with a bow and an arrow of flower so whomsoever because he is blind he does not know to whom he should strike so he makes the most odd matches he strikes uh, a man and a woman and they fall in love and it's not necessary that they are the perfect match so they can be a mixture of opposites and this happens because love is blind because the god of love himself is blind and he blindly shoots his arrow so here the poet is saying that once this little love god was lying asleep and just beside him was the band his weapon that he carried to burn the heart of people now heart in flaming band obviously refers to the weapon of cupid you have seen what weapon cupid carries with him and uh, why has it been called the heart in flaming one because uh, it burns the heart with the passion of love so it's not the heart burn in the sense of uh, heart break or heart ache but rather it means the passion of love so with this weapon cupid attacks the prospective lovers and make their heart burn in the passion of love so as of now he is not harming anyone by love he is not attacking anyone with his love arrows rather he is lying asleep and just beside him lay the weapon that he carries willest many names that vowed chest life to keep came tripling by but in her maiden hand the fairest votary took up that fire which many legions of true heart had warmed at that moment a group of beautiful women appeared at that place these women had taken the vow of chastity that means they had taken the vow that they will remain uh, virgin throughout their life now in the mythology in the classical mythology we find that diana is the goddess of chastity so these nymphs must be the attendants of diana the goddess of chastity so now you just need to see the contrast on one hand these women the nymphs are representing the complete negation of sexual desire and love on the other hand cupid is the god of sexual desire and love so there is a situation of the contradiction on one hand the women the nymphs who have taken the vow of chastity on the other hand their enemy why is cupid their enemy because cupid is the person who makes people fall in love and because of making people fall in love people lose their chastity so these women would obviously consider cupid as their true genuine enemy so what happens is they came to that portion where cupid was lying asleep and the most beautiful votary that means the most beautiful worshipper of diana among that group so that group had many women but among that the lady who was the most beautiful the maiden who was the most beautiful took up that fire that lady took up the weapon of cupid in her hands now this weapon what it has done is which many legions of true hearts had warmed so this weapon had been used to heat up the heart of many legions means multitudes of people in this world since 
generation after generation cupid has burned the hearts of many men and women using this weapon this brand this uh, fire and now normally you know brand means a mashal and uh, cupid is expected to carry a, a mashal also sometimes but Uh, we can also interpret brand as the bow and the arrow because it's not necessary that only cupid would require the fire to burn the heart of a person he can also burn the heart by shooting an arrow towards that person so brand can be interpreted as that mashal that uh, the fire piece that burns in the hand of cupid or it can also be interpreted as the bow arrow of cupid so this woman took the brand in her hand and Uh, she knew that this brand is the real enemy towards chastity because this brand burns the heart of many many people with the feelings of love and so the general of hot desire was sleeping who is the general of hot desire cupid general means leader hot desire means passion romantic passion love so cupid is the provider the king the ruler of hot desires and he was sleeping by a virgin hand disarmed and at that moment a virgin a chaste woman stole the firebrand from his place so uh, cupid was disarmed by the hands of a virgin so you see this poem is full of contrasts on one hand there is love on the other hand there is uh, love nestless the chastity on other one hand you have the passion on the other hand you have the virginity on one hand you have cupid and on the other hand you have the votaries of diana so this woman she stole the weapon of cupid she stole the band from the uh, place where cupid had kept it then what she did now uh, this brand she quenched in a cool well by which from love's fire took heat perpetual she took this brand and put it in the water of a well and what the well did was it soaked all the passion from that torch it soaked all the passion from that mashal so uh, this water instead of extinguishing the fire it soaked the passion from that fire growing a bath and healthful remedy for men diseased but i i my mistress's thrall came there for cure and this by that i prove love's fire heats water water cools not love and from that point the water of this well became sacred water for the lovers whenever the lovers suffered from heartache whenever the lovers suffered from heart burn they came to this water to quench to satisfy the pain of their love so uh, this place became a place of worship for the lovers all around the world who gathered there to quench to calm down the passion that was burning inside their hearts because of love but what is the poet trying to prove here the last part of the poem is going to tell you that many men have come here to take the water from this well and wash down their passion and the poet says that i my mistress's thrall i am the slave of my mistress now here i need to remind you that this sonnet also belongs to the dark lady category we have not yet left the dark lady category the cupid category of sonnets is not an independent category it is a part of the dark lady sonnets so we are still continuing the theme of the dark lady and because we have not read all the poems of dark lady category we need to remember that in this particular sonnet uh, shakespeare is speaking about the poetic persona is speaking about the passion that he has for this woman which makes him oscillate between like a pendulum i told you in the introduction video the poet has to oscillate between two extremes of emotions on one hand there is the lust for this woman the extreme passion for this woman and the on the other hand there is the guilt he is feeling shy he is feeling ashamed of himself for being so much passionate for a woman whom he knows might be morally corrupt so 
despite knowing the fact that this woman is not a very genuine person she is not a very dedicated lover the poet has a deep rooted passion for this woman so he continuously moves like a pendulum sometimes getting attracted towards her sometimes coming back from her so continuously burning in desire and yet feeling shame feeling guilty for this passion so shakespeare uh, says that i am my mistress's thrall that means i am the slave thrall means slave of my mistress came there for cure so i went to that well where cupid's torch had been uh, placed in that well i had gone hoping that i would be cured from this confusion hoping that i would be washed off this passion so that is clear that he is not very happy with that passion and he wants to get rid of this passion for this woman so he went to that well to cleanse his heart to purify his heart from this passion and this by that i prove love's fire heats water water cools not love so love's fire is so powerful so passionate that no water can extinguish it just like cupid's torch cupid's brand could not be extinguished by the water of the well similarly our poet's passion for this dark lady could not be cleansed could not be uh, stopped by the um, remedy that he had tried any remedy could not cure him from that passion from that burning desire that uh, he had for that dark lady so uh, he says that it's quite a, a paradox paradox is a contrast so quite a contrast that normally water has the capacity to cool down fire but love's fire that is passion is so powerful that water also cannot cool it down rather water soaks that passion from the torch of cupid so now there is no remedy for the passion of love to subside there is no remedy to reduce no cure to reduce this burning sensation that love ignites in the heart of a lover so he ultimately reaches the realization that it's not possible for him to get over his uh, passion for the dark lady thank you